More than 400,000 Ontarians rely on food banks each month to ward off hunger. 148,000 of them are children. A single person on the Ontario Work Social Assistance Program receives only $606 per month for all his or her needs. Could you live on $606 per month? Did you know poverty costs Ontario $13 billion per year in increased health care expenses and other costs? Or that people are dying from homelessness? Anglicans are helping thousands of people across our diocese to meet their immediate needs for food and shelter at meal programs, food banks, and out of the cold programs. Hunger and poverty don't just affect people in Toronto. All across our diocese, in communities large and small, people struggle to pay the rent and put food on the table. In Peterborough, a city where one child in five lives in poverty. The parish of St. John's Peterborough helps people to meet their basic needs. Here, parish staff and volunteers distribute boxes of healthy food to low-income families. Our support for people in need can literally save lives. The Reverend Gordon Finney, parish priest at St. John's, explains. Issues of poverty are always near the surface here in Peterborough. There, we have the highest rate of unemployment in Ontario, this, this small municipality. And in a municipality of 74,000 people, we have uh, 1,500 people on waiting lists for uh, affordable places to live. I was remembering a story just recently of a woman who, uh, who came to us, and, and we have a, a seniors building, St. John's Centre next door, two-thirds of which are rent geared to income. And, and she said, you've saved my life. Uh, she was about to be homeless in, a, in about two months. Uh, she had uh, very low income, she'd been living in a car for a while, and now she's a, become a very active parishioner here, singing in our choir. There needs to be more of that, more, more rent geared to income housing, so that regardless of what someone's uh, income is, they can find something that they can live with. Poverty and injustice are first and foremost issues of faith. Christian Harvey, a youth minister and an outreach worker based at St. John's Peterborough, makes the connection. Hi, my name is Christian Harvey and I work at St. John's Anglican Church as the youth worker and also as a liaison between the church and the Lighthouse Drop-In Centre that exists in our basement. We serve all kinds of people at the Drop-In Centre. Some people um, uh, who just are looking for community, some people who, uh, who are living in rooming houses so have no place to really um, to really get out other than their room. So this get, allows them a place to come that's not their bedroom, um, as well as many people who, who have no place or who are on the streets or staying in shelters. Um, one of the issues is that in Peterborough there are quite a few people who, who are living on the streets. Because we only have one men's shelter, uh, what results is if there's anything that happens that for whatever reason someone can't stay there, then it results in them on the streets. Um, some of these can be teenagers, some of these can be, can be adults. Um, this has been a real issue. Uh, I remember one young woman coming and uh, we were having a really serious conversation. She's just like, so Christian, I'm new to this town. Where should I sleep tonight? Like, what's the best place? And, and it was a weird thing for me to be thinking through the lens of uh, if I were her and I had no building to sleep in, where would I sleep? Uh, and so thinking about which bridge had the least amount of animals, where you wouldn't have water issues, you know, where, where you'd have the least amount of human traffic, where you wouldn't get, you know, you know roughed up, that sort of thing. And this is, this is the reality of, of quite a few people uh, in Peterborough. So one of the things that we've started um, is an ecumenical conversation of what churches, both evangelical and mainline, can do together to try and push um, Peterborough to be a more... Uh, equitable community. That for the church, um, if we can model um, working together despite our diversity, then we can model the peace of Christ, I think, to the world. The Reverend Paul Hansen, a Roman Catholic priest and veteran social justice advocate, says the voice of faith communities needs to be louder. 
Greetings. I'm with you today to suggest the gospel call to be there for the less fortunate, to be about the same life today as Jesus was 2,000 years ago, a life that got him crucified because he challenged the power of the day. He was a voice for the voiceless. And so, dear friends, when we look at the world in which we live today and when we see on the news our, our present governor of the Bank of Canada telling us that the top 1% are basically paying less and less taxes or they're even getting tax benefits from the government. As a result, they're paying off their CEOs. They are capitalizing their own organizations or as our governor of the Bank of Canada called it, billions of dead money, money that could be used to fight inequality, to be there for housing, education, that could be there for, for food in the budget, that could be there for all of those things that make for the common good. Remember the gospel, friends. The gospel calls us to radical discipleship. As a Jesuit friend, Father Dan Berrigan, now well in his early 90s, would say, if you want to be a follower of Jesus, you better look good on wood. Poverty and inequality are not inevitable. They result from the choices that governments make and the choices we make when we vote. That's why a growing number of Anglicans are getting involved in advocacy with government. Anglicans also work with many other justice partners on anti-poverty and other advocacy campaigns. One such group is the Put Food in the Budget Coalition. It's calling for an immediate $100 monthly increase for single people on social assistance so that they can afford to eat healthy food and meet other basic needs. Sharon Norman lives on Ontario Disability Benefits and helped launch the Put Food in the Budget advocacy campaign. She explains why. My name's Sharon and um, I was on OW and I realized that I uh, didn't have enough to eat so I was slowly starving. So I, I needed to access my local food bank which was uh, at the Stop Community Food Centre up at uh, Davenport and Sibbington. From there I started volunteering in the food bank and became more involved with uh, the Bread and Brick Social Justice Group. From there, became involved with uh, Put Food in the Budget. Put Food in the Budget is a provincial campaign that uh, works to try and raise social assistance rates to a livable um, and adequate amount uh, by w working towards getting um, an immediate $100 increase as a down payment on a livable rate and uh, so that people can live a life of health and dignity. When I was still on OW, I had an errand to run and I was walking along and I saw a cucumber that had fallen out of someone's shopping and um, it was wrapped in plastic and hadn't been run over or, or anything, like it was perfectly good. And I looked around to see if I could see the person who had lost their cucumber, but I could not. So I picked it up and took it home, and that was a really nice treat because I can't, um, I can't afford to spend money on cucumbers. I managed to make that cucumber last about two weeks. She calls out to the man on the street, Sir, can you help me? It's cold and I know where to sleep. About 25 years ago, I guess, I ended up in Toronto, and I never experienced homelessness. I never knew nothing about homelessness until I got here. And the first place I ended up being was Seton House, and I really got a taste of what hostile life was like, like poverty. I saw homeless people, huge addiction problems, huge mental health problems, which if you're a sane person, they take a toll on you. Yeah. I think what the common story with us all is, is you don't see any light in the tunnel anymore. You don't have the resources to get into an apartment. There is no housing, and the government's known this for years, and they keep on cutting hostel beds. We've lost 300 beds in shelters over the last few years, and um, that's why I'm going to a rally tomorrow with that. It's just another day for you and me. Ha <laughs> ha.
Uh, my name is Amanda. I'm, I've been living in Toronto for about 12 years now. Um, I'd always thought Toronto was an exciting city and everything was great here. And when I came here, I didn't know there were places you can go to eat. And I literally starved for two days. I didn't know. So I found these places that you could go to eat and it really opened my eyes to um, just how many people are needy in Toronto, how many people have struggled just to eat on a daily basis. Some people end up on the street not by, by silly choices. You know, it's just the, the card that they've been dealt or circumstances that they have no control over. Um, but we found ourselves um, living outside. But we were hungry. We were very, very hungry. And um, so we were walking to our sleeping spot at um, Sunnyside Beach and there is the Palais Royale. And I saw that there was this big celebration going on. I'm like, Oh, you know, and, and you know what these galas, like people eat half a plate of food and they throw it away. So I went to the, the back kitchen and, and I knocked on the door. I didn't enter the kitchen and I was just being very, very polite and respectful. And I knocked on the door and I, was, I asked the gentleman, I said, please, sir, like, I'm very hungry. Could you please spare a, a, a roll or, or a piece of bread or something? And he yelled at me. He made me feel like this big, like I was a beggar, like a filthy beggar. And he actually, get away from this door and don't you come back here. I'll call the police. And I was like, I was shocked. I walked away, I didn't want to have the police called, so um, about half an hour later, uh, this young kid came running out of the kitchen with a, his dirty apron, he'd been working very hard, and he had a plate of food, and he was looking around the park, looking around the park, and he goes, and, and he, we made eye contact, and he just barreled right towards me, he said, here, he goes, don't let him see you eating it, and he ran back to the kitchen. And I'm like, God bless you, you know? Each of us is either part of the problems we see around us, or we are part of the solution. All of us have a role to play in combating poverty. My name is Michael Shapcott. For more than 30 years, I've been a housing and homeless advocate. I'm also a member of uh, Church of the Holy Trinity here in uh, downtown Toronto. And in many ways, the physical location here symbolizes the kind of issues we deal with. We're here, just a few steps south of us is uh, King and Bay, which is the heart of Canada's financial district huge amount, billions and billions of dollars flowing through the buildings there uh, every day. And uh, just on the other side, uh, uh, right up next to the Holy Trinity building, is the Toronto Homeless Memorial, which uh, sadly now has uh, 700 names of women and men who've died uh, because of homelessness in the city. So the extremes uh, that the city of Toronto represents, a highly prosperous city, a city with huge wealth, one of the richest cities in the world. And I guess one of the key messages that I want to deliver is that homelessness and housing insecurity are not the result of individual pathology. People don't choose when their children to grow up and be homeless and die before they reach their 30th birthday. Uh, homelessness in a city, in a rich city like Toronto, is a result of structural economic and social issues. Uh, it's a result of cuts in the 1990s by the federal government the provincial government and indeed the municipal government cuts to housing programs and as our national housing program was cancelled in the 1990s we saw the rise in mass homelessness and more numbers added to our list of homeless people who died. Uh, I'm Sean Gadden, I'm uh, working at the City of Toronto, I'm the uh, director of the affordable housing office at the City of Toronto. Uh, I've had the opportunity over the uh, last decade to work with the Anglican community in Toronto and the, in particular the uh, the housing committee. Frankly the uh, work that the Anglican committee uh, has brought and the attention that they've brought to the issue and in the meetings they've had with me they've influenced uh, the decisions uh, that have been made at Toronto City Council um, but perhaps even more so they've provided me as a senior official at the city um, the courage to take on very difficult issues that um, uh, I probably otherwise uh, would not have been able to do. My name is Angie Hawking. I'm the Outreach Coordinator here at Redeemer. Um, this is a really special program. Uh, we, we see about 120 people a day. The irony that we're in Yorkville is, is speaks for itself, I think. Uh, Redeemer has been at the corner of Bloor and Avenue for 140 years as a structure. We have the, the most densely populated and uh, most affluent area in Canada, I've heard, I think, um, in this area. So this is a very rich area, um, and here we are having a meal program right in the middle of it. 
the inequities that we see in this area is is sad and it's troubling and I think uh, as Christians we have a lot to say about that we need to, to take a stand on on that and we're struggling to raise a hundred thousand dollars to run our program next door there's purses for sale for twenty thousand dollars each it kind of blows my mind um, at the same time, I think there's hope in it. I, I, I don't think we sit and we get angry about it. I think we say we're a voice, we're an important voice in this space. Hello, I'm Archbishop Colin Johnson, the Anglican Archbishop of Toronto. Advocacy has been part of the ministry of the Diocese of Toronto since its very beginning. Advocacy means to give voice to something, to speak on behalf of people, to speak to people. Advocacy is about creating a community of faith, of hope, and of compassion so that all people can participate in the good things that God wishes for all. We can make a difference. You can make a difference. And together we can create a world where justice and mercy, where compassion and hope are the hallmarks of our society. Please add your voice.